Okay, so I've got Max Barron uh, on the end of the telephone here. He's one half of Jones, the directorial duo, should I say, that have made Everyone's Going to Die, which was the indie film that was shot here in Folkestone. So, Max, great to have you. Uh, Hi, Tom. Thanks for having us. No worries. So, tell us a little bit about the premise of Everyone's Going to Die. The premise of the film is it sort of platonic love story, really, between two people who are at um, a bit of a similar stage in their lives, although they're kind of different ages. There's a a male character who's in his early 50s and is having what you might describe as a slight midlife crisis. And uh, there's a girl who's in her late kind of 20s and going through the same thing, maybe more of a quarter-life crisis, but they're both sort of a little bit lost and they're quite unlikely pairing in a, for reasons that I won't ruin for anyone that wants to see sure. the film but uh but they kind of meet up it's set over a day or a couple of days in in Folkestone and they they meet up and kind of help each other out and end up a bit further forward than where they started so it's kind of a walking talking funny film hopefully with a little bit to say as well excellent so if we sort of rewind to when you first came up with the idea so as i mentioned before you're part of a duo director yeah. duo along with michael woodward yeah now have you worked together before how, how did it all come about uh we've worked together for, for um or michael and i have worked together for years now actually we originally were making television commercials and music videos and things like shorter form films and we really wanted to make a feature film and um with the kind of new technology there is now and um various kind of developments in that industry it's a bit more accessible now to people to just go out and kind of make your first film without needing to spend you know many many years raising huge amounts of money so we were really lucky to um be able to raise you know what by film standards a very small budget uh kind of privately and um and beyond that we just set out to kind of write a story that we knew we could tell with the resources we had but also something that we kind of you know wanted to say and was based on the kind of films we like and I guess um, you know, we've, we've always been quite into American indie cinema. We kind of grew up with that, really. And it was nice that we, because you don't have the kind of pressure of, you know, these huge finances or whatever on your back, you can really kind of just, you know, make the film you want to make and, and hope that you're proud of it at the end of it and hope that everybody else likes it too and, and not really have to be too cynical about it. So there wasn't that much strategy involved, really. It was just like, you know, what do we think is a cool story and, and what do we think is funny and... Yeah, as I say, what we know we can do. I mean, the you know, explosions and uh, helicopters <laughs> and army battle scenes were always going to be out. Sure, uh, yeah. Um, although, actually, they're not really necessarily our kind of thing anyway. So cool, yeah. So it, it fitted together quite well. So did you, did you shoot it digitally then? Yeah, exactly. We shot on a camera called the Alexa, which right. is actually a brilliant camera. And it's a kind of high-end digital camera. But we were a bit lucky also in that we had sort of previous relationships from making ads and, and other stuff that meant that, you know, people we'd worked with before were really lovely and generous and did us a lot of favours to, to get kit and uh, and actually just with their time to make it all kind of happen, uh, which, uh, you know, if we'd have, being honest, you know, if we'd have gone and paid what they call rate card for everything, mm. uh, we'd have never got off the ground. So, sure. uh, yeah, we were really lucky. Everybody was incredibly, you know, supportive and generous to us. So, I mean, how much did you have to initially raise to, to start filming then? Well, we shot the film for £65,000. Wow, um, that's really good. Yeah, which is not a lot. Well, I mean, it, it's, I suppose it depends. You've got to see the film first. And it's, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, probably make their own mind up whether we spent it wisely, but it's certainly a small budget by film standards. Um, so, so was that private? Uh, all private funding? or was Yeah, it? essentially we went to sort of... Well, the plan was to speak to a... Um, a large number of people and, and ask them to give what, in comparative terms, was is a, a small amount of money each, mm. if you see what I mean, and and do it that way. Uh, and in fact, we've come, you know, a bit back around to that when it comes to funding the distribution of it as well. So the whole uh, the whole process has been very um, much, you know, a load of people getting involved in something that they kind of think is cool and um, you know, trying to get a result out of it that we're all proud of. So we had uh, Kelly Broad on last week, week before on Kay's show. Sure. How did how did she get involved in the project? How did she come on board? Well, Kel, who's our producer, we met 
uh, she produced a film that a friend of ours made um, called Third Star with Benedict Cumberbatch in it. And uh, cool. we knew, uh, as I say, the director of that, who's, who's called Hattie, and, uh, and she introduced us to Kel, and we were talking about making this film, and we, the one thing we really didn't know how to do was produce it. So mm-hmm. we, we kind of wrote it, we directed it, um, we can edit and, and everything. And to a certain extent, we, we helped produce the film, but really the production, uh, you know, credit all belongs to Kel. She sort of made it happen, and... Uh, yeah, and was brilliant at it. And so this was the first... We'd worked on a couple of small things with her before, but nothing kind of significant. So this was really the first time we'd all worked together and we all loved it and we we're hoping to, you know, repeat the, the uh, repeat that many times in the future. And so how did... When you, when you came to actually shooting the film in Folkestone, how did you find the experience being in Folkestone and, and shooting the film in Folkestone? Shooting in Folkestone was amazing. We all fell in love with it. I mean, we had, uh, I don't really know where to start on this one. We we had crew members who kind of had to go off and take other work. We all came down and stayed in Folkestone for sort of 20, 25 days or a bit longer, maybe like a month, including the prep. And we rented, um, you know, places down there or stayed in B&Bs. And, uh, and so there's a whole bunch of people coming down there really that didn't. We, we also had crew from Folkestone and, you know, they were brilliant too. And But we had a whole bunch of people down there who didn't know the place really until they got there. And we had people who had to go off and take other work and weren't meant to come back and they came back and joined again for free sort of thing just wow. because they loved it yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of like a i don't want to say it was a holiday because it was really you know hard work <laughs> in lots of ways and we were long holiday. hours and stuff but it was such a great time and, and the people um of folkestone were so supportive like i say and generous you know letting us shoot in their houses very often you wow. know we couldn't afford to pay proper location fees to people we you know, we just had to ask if they wanted to get involved and if they did, you know, try and be as amenable as we could. And it was completely, uh, you know, very moving, actually, how, um, you know, how lovely everybody was. And uh, we've been back, we've all been back lots of times since, Brilliant. with and without the film. I go back every month or so just to, you know, have a wander around and eat some nice food and, and, and kind of reconnect with the place because, yeah, it's been a really special thing for us, actually, and a huge part of the film, Um Folkestone's kind of a character in the film, really, if you see it in the end. Mm, mm. Uh, so, so, so from a cinematic point of view as well, it was just the absolute perfect place to shoot. It's, it's got so much going for it in terms of what it looks like. And, um, and as I say, everybody's attitude was just so lovely, uh, which I have to say, if you, if you shoot in London all the time, which we do, is not something that you come to expect. So right, uh, yeah. it was a really lovely surprise. So you shot the film back in 2011? Goodness. Yes, you're probably right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we shot in the autumn of 2011, exactly. And, and then, um, what, and the film was finished, what, in 2012, was it? Or Yeah, the beginning of... And we finished the film in the beginning of 2013. Right, OK, yeah. Uh, and the, one of the reasons for that, again, is because we're all doing this, you know, first sort of love. Uh, yeah. We had to kind of spend a lot of time in the edit process taking other work and getting together some money to buy ourselves some time off to go back and, and edit again and and asking favours of people in post-production, which obviously takes a lot longer and things. So it was a quite protracted process um, on the back end after we'd finished the film, just because, you know, that was the reality. OK, so you've made the film. Obviously, you can... Yeah, I assume you sent it to film festivals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what ones has it gone out to, just out of curiosity? The film festival run started in um, South by Southwest. Oh, Texas, wow, yeah. Uh, which is a really great... Um, festival for for this kind of film actually it's a big indie festival in the states and they loved it and they were really supportive of it and they programmed us they you know they announced our film in the first batch of like six films and along with all these other really big american ones which was brilliant and um and we sort of started from there and we've been in edinburgh we were in uh dinard in france we were in istanbul moscow um mar del plata in argentina uh Luxembourg, Mons, a uh, place called Angers in France again. Uh, we were in Emden in Germany. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a couple. There's there, there's been a lot. Uh, oh, Rain Dance actually in London. Oh, great, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's we've been all over the place with it, and it's been lovely. And the reaction, luckily, has been really positive, even That's even for people watching like a Russian translation or whatever. Right. So, okay. Um, yeah. So it's no, obviously it's translating great. across. Yeah, so, that's brilliant. I mean, uh, and it's great that you obviously got that uh, acclaim uh, at the festivals. I guess the the 
the tough thing for any filmmaker now, I mean, I'm a filmmaker myself, I find it really difficult, is getting any kind of distribution uh, for this kind of indie film. You know, you've got multiplexes with, like, thousands of screens of Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but getting any kind of independent film in the cinema um, is really tough. Um, So, I mean, what are you doing to, to, to change that kind of thing? Well... Yeah, the distribution situation for indie films in the UK is really difficult. It's, uh, I don't know that we're doing anything that will change that uh, full stop, but what we're, what's happening actually is that obviously people react to that, and I do think there's an audience for these type of films, and we've been able to see that going around to the festivals and the people that have seen it in, in other ways and the word of mouth and the critical response to it. So it feels like there are people out there that really want to see these films. I can understand that financially... It's just a very difficult equation for big distributors when they've got such big, like, heavy-hitting franchise films and stuff around. So uh, from our point of view, it's really trying to find an independent way to distribute it in, mm. in the same way that we found an independent way to shoot it. And, yeah. um, and that is, at the moment, that's uh, taking the form of a Kickstarter campaign, which is a crowdfunding website where basically people go and back um, and contribute to creative or entrepreneurial projects that they kind of think look interesting and believe in and and people kind of go on on this kickstarter and they can buy essentially a series of rewards we give away kind of limited edition posters tickets to the premiere all the way up to dinner with rob the leading man (laughs) and uh, a part in our next film and various kind of rewards and um yeah so we've uh, the the money to fund the distribution will come from that and and that campaign's been running now for uh I think three weeks, well, not quite three weeks out of the four total. And um, our target is is £22,000, and we're already at 17800 I think, today. So That's it's brilliant. been brilliant. It's gone really, really well. And um, obviously we still need <laughs> the rest, um, because if you don't get your target, you get nothing with Kickstarter. you kind of got to get it. Yeah, yeah. You've got to reach it. Otherwise, you know, you don't get any of the money. So... Yeah, we've got our fingers crossed and we're working really hard and, and trying to uh, yeah, bring the rest of the money in. But it's been, again, amazing and, you know, really lovely to, to sort of, yeah, see the response on, online. Well, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of filmmakers and uh, creative people are going down this crowdfunding route now um, because it, it, it also it has that kind of, imme- people have that immediacy, that sense of being a part of something as well which is brilliant i i think that's great so you know if you're out there in Folkestone, you know want to uh, be involved and supportive of independent british filmmakers um then you should definitely check this out so you just go on to the was it on kickstarter have you got a uh, a web address that I could give you a web address. It, it's probably all like dots and ones and things like that. <laughs> if you went into, onto kickstarter.com and typed in everyone's going to die, um, yep. which may seem like a morbid thing to type in, but <laughs> it's just the title of the film, which isn't morbid. Uh, so, um, and, and that will bring it up. And we've also got a Facebook page, which all links through to the Kickstarter campaign. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere that you would yeah, be able to find us normally. Brilliant. Okay. Well, look, Max, it's been great speaking to you. Uh, and, you oh, know, well. Yeah, please uh, keep us in the loop about you know what you what you're doing and and when the where the film's going and you know it'd be nice if you could uh, come down and do a screening in Folkestone that'd be amazing. Yeah, listen, thank you, and we would absolutely love to come back and do a screening in Folkestone. Like I said, we're it, Folkestone is such a huge part of the film, both on the screen itself and and off the screen. And um, yeah, we can't really thank the people of Folkestone enough. So fingers crossed that we make this money. We will put it in some cinemas. We will come down and show it in Folkestone. And yeah, <laughs> no, we would really love to do that. So we'll hopefully see you there. Best of luck. Take care now. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.